I'm J.R. Church. Welcome to today's analysis of the news. Well, it looks a little grim around the world. I began with an article from the Ukraine. This man stands in line in Kiev at the Nadra Bank, and he's planning to withdraw $10,000 or the equivalent thereof, but like many others, he was told that the cash was not available. He said, quote, I stood in line a couple of times with other bank clients who were protesting, crying, and screaming. But the bank told me, sorry, we simply don't have the money now and can't help you. With about nine banks now under the central bank's special control, Ukrainians are increasingly worried. Even those with their money in apparently solid banks, including those controlled by West European banking groups, they're concerned because the central bank has banned the early redemption of term deposits, the most popular form of saving in the Ukraine. Bank deposits have dropped 20% since September. So you can see some of the problems that our economy has created around the world. Here's an article about Russia and China. You can see, by the way, Vladimir Putin and the Chinese premier shaking hands. Um, they have uh, both given suggestions on, or I should say warnings, on what we should do about our economy. Can you imagine two communist countries trying to tell us, the, the, the supreme capitalists, how we should be careful with our money and not uh, allow it to be devalued? Both governments are worried about the value of their dollar-denominated assets holding up during Washington's upcoming Spending binge. Well, Red China um, owns about $2 trillion worth of U.S. debt and assets. And Russia owns hundreds of billions of dollars. Doesn't say exactly how many, but a lot. In fact, a Kremlin bailout plan for Russian steelmaker Evraz may, say hun may save hundreds of American jobs because Erav has a steel mill in Portland. <laughs> Millions of Chinese workers depend on the continued willingness of American consumers to buy their goods at Walmart and uh, other stores across the U.S., Severe unrest could erupt among the millions of unemployed Chinese who recently relocated to China's cities from its rural villages. China's central bank continues to hold $2 trillion in denominated reserves, as I said. And so uh, Luo Ping, uh, director general of the China Regulatory Banking Commission, declared in a recent visit to New York, quote, We hate you guys. Once you start issuing one to two trillion dollars in new debt, we know that the dollar is going to depreciate. So we hate you guys, but there's nothing much we can do. End of quote. Well, that's tough. The world catches pneumonia when we get the sniffles. So it seems. Here's another one. A top economist warns of civil violence and government overthrow. He's a Harvard economist and best-selling author, Neal Ferguson. And he warned, quote, there will be blood. He says, this is, this is a crisis of globalization. Uh, he made this statement in a speech. Uh, he said, a crisis of this magnitude is bound to increase political as well as economic conflict and is bound to destabilize some countries. He said, it will cause civil wars to break out that have been dormant. It will topple governments that were moderate and bring in governments that are extreme. He said it's a crisis of excessive debt. And the deleveraging process has barely begun. U.S. consumers are not going to suddenly bounce back and hit the shopping malls just because they get a tax cut. Ferguson also criticized the phenomena of the U.S. selling massive quantities of treasury debt to China as a means of financing massive budget deficits. And he has cautioned that the U.S. cannot depend upon China to save so that it may continue spending. And on her foreign trip, 
Secretary of State Hillary Clinton made a stop in China to politely ask the Chinese to keep on buying U.S. treasuries. <laughs> and then finally this one, stock markets drop worldwide, the Dow falls below 7,000, and American bankers give a message to Obama, quote, stop trashing us. Here's what uh, they say. Uh, this is uh, ABA CEO Edward Yingling. He said, quote, Mr. President, of, o of the over 8,000 banks in this country, very few have ever made a single subprime loan. They did not engage in the highly leveraged activities that brought down Wall Street firms, end of quote. He said, Mr. President, the failure to distinguish between Wall Street and the thousands of FDIC-insured banks across the country undermines the confidence in our banking industry. The industry, which is the foundation on which our economy, our economic recovery, must be built. And so, we've got financial woes, not only in America, but all over the world. And... Uh, of course, 20 countries are meeting, uh, or will be meeting in a few weeks, uh, to try to de design a new world order to stabilize the world's currencies through the, I guess, International Monetary Fund or through the United Nations. How would you like to have the United Nations ruling your country, huh? Well, it could happen. Now, we've... You know, we've told you about this for many, many years, and yet it looks like that it's time for those um, global elite, for the global elite, to put a one-world government together. Of course, the Bible talks about that. It's, it will be the day when the Antichrist rises to power and establishes his government worldwide over all nations, and then will issue a new monetary system called the Mark of the beast. It's coming. It's coming, folks. And even though we have tried to stand against it, and I remember Ronald Reagan saying, I'm not going to let Armageddon uh, come on my watch. Uh, in spite of all of that, Armageddon is coming. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you need to trust Him today. He's the only one who can save you from the mess our world is falling into. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And He's coming back one of these days just in the nick of time to save the world. In fact, Jesus said if He didn't come back when He does, there would no flesh be saved. Amazing. In spite of what the world thinks about Jesus, He is their only, only hope. I'm J.R. Church. Don't forget our magazine. I almost forgot to tell you. The March magazine has some really terrific things in it. One, of course, is my part two of the ancient book of Enoch, a book written to those who would be living in the tribulation period. I think it's time to publish the book of Enoch and let you know what it's all about. And then we have uh, an article by Gary Stearman on The Last Trump. And we have this fascinating sermon uh, by Reverend Herbert McKenzie on does the truth, does this truth paralyze or energize? That is the study of Bible prophecy. Does the study of Bible prophecy energize you or paralyze you? Well, we discuss it in this magazine. So be sure and get the March edition, will you? In fact, I'd encourage you to subscribe because with our magazine, you can keep up month after month with the very latest in biblical studies, prophetic studies. I hope you'll get it. Remember our, our special offers. You can get four books or three free videos with a one-year subscription to Prophecy in the News. Such a deal. Well, we'll see you again tomorrow with our analysis of the news.